Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel and reports from the SPN are stating that Gareth Southgate, aka Waistcoat, has significant support inside Ineos to succeed Eric Ten Hag at the end of the season if he was to lose his job. I'm absolutely devastated on this news and to be honest with you, I feel like wrapping it up right now, going jumping in the canal. But what's your thoughts on this? My thoughts on this is this story, I've, for the first in a long time, I sent United fans into a meltdown. Some are for it, some are against it. But I tell you what, you know, does bringing in a manager make sense in the summer? Well, that's for you to sort out. But I need to, I need to listen to what he said first, what, what the story is, because I cannot believe that Ineos are even thinking about this. Yeah, a little bit at the top of the actual report says multiple sources have told ESPN that he has significant support within the new Ineos-led hierarchy at Manchester United to succeed Eric Ten Hag as manager if the Dutchman loses his job at the end of the season. So there's ifs and buts there. Well, yeah. it's, not, it's all ifs and buts, <laughs> isn't it? I don't know what to yeah, well, I'm confused by <laughs> it, right? But it's sent everyone into a meltdown. And you've got to look at, at what he's saying. If you look at Southgate, okay, what's he doing? 100% he is committed to winning the Euros. That's his goal. He's got to concentrate on that. That won't finish till the end of June. So at the end of the day, you're talking about having a bit of time off and then the manager being changed, coming in in July. It makes no sense whatsoever to me to think about Gareth Southgate. In many ways, that's, that's just one. It is not the right timing to bring in a manager because he's not free. And it also, you've got to ask the question, what influence has Gareth Southgate got towards next season? Absolutely nothing. Nothing to do with transfers. He won't be in charge. He won't have any, any influence whatsoever. He is concentrating on the Euros. He can't concentrate on United. Mm -hmm. And what we need now is everyone to work together inside Manchester United, not change the manager. If you think you've seen chaos and you think it's over, then you're deluded. The chaos is still there and it's still got to be rooted out. And by changing a manager, right, who knows what's going on, who says he's dealing with Ineos and the people within there about the budget and the transfer policy in the summer, OK, then you have to believe the manager is still going to be there unless you don't want that manager there at all costs, just change him regardless. But I'll go back to it. This club is in chaos and it's going to take ages to get rid of the chaos and sort it out. By bringing a manager into chaos creates more chaos. That's how I see it. But for Gareth Southgate, there is many pluses and there's many negatives. Many pluses. I, one of the neg negatives I'm looking at is not even managed a, you know, an actual football side, forget a national team, for 15 years. I think it was Middlesbrough, was it? Is it 12th and 13th who finished in his first two seasons? Third season got relegated. Then he was sacked into that season in the championship. Yeah, yeah but he was a young manager 15 then. 15 years he, ago. No, no, but he was young then, right? OK. The positives. You've got to look at it, OK? Gareth Southgate comes in. He's worked with these people. He understands the structure, understands the way. He's a yes man. That's what he is. He's a yes man. Now, if he come, if he come in he would have nothing to do with the transfers. So he would be accepting that that responsibility isn't his and he would have to work with the players, OK? That's the structure, OK? What Gareth Southgate is working under, he's working under players. What come to him now, what are the best in class in England, he's working with them. Man management, people talk about, he's got good skills and all that. That's something what people have been complaining about in Manchester United, that the man management style of Eric Ten Hag. But if you look at the man management style, it's been chaos. People have thought they're bigger than the club and Eric has put discipline in. Now, that's something people have applauded Gareth Southgate for having discipline within the squad. He's brought harmony and there is no harmony in the Manchester United squad. But is it the right time? So, you know, maybe, maybe not for some people. I did say actually to Jim Ratcliffe, we were just talking about playing style, etc. I just Googled it and what he said in February. And he says he wants to play attacking, exciting football, bringing the youth through. 
You want players that are committed. You want players that play 90 minutes. Those are the type of players you want playing for Manchester United. And then he went on to the philosophy, what he wants to bring here to the club. And he said, we'll decide that style, plus the CEO, sporting director, and probably the recruitment guys, what the style of football is. And that will be the Manchester United style of football. And the coach will have to play that style. So, okay. yeah, well, it's not the, the manager that's going to be dictating here, just like you said, you, no, you're it, correct. It's not the manager's dictating, but at the end of the day, you're but can Gary Southgate also play that football, attacking, exciting football? I don't watch England too much, so, you know, my opinion might not hold a lot of weight to this, but I've never known England to play exciting, attacking football. Ineos want to bring an attacking style, the Manchester United way, as they say. Gary Southgate has no clue whatsoever, right, and has not got the bottle to open up a team and just go full at it. We have seen that, so he doesn't fit the bill. So this story, right, is it true? I don't think it's it, it's true, to be honest, but that's my personal feeling. But at the end of the day, Gareth Southgate, as far as I'm concerned, or, and many people out there, looking at it, looking at his style of football and how he plays football, it's cautious. Manchester United should never be cautious. Manchester United should always be on the foot. Jim Rat on the front foot, shall I say. So Jim Ratcliffe knows how the fans want it, knows how the club's built, how the philosophy is. It's on the front foot, taking it to him. Doesn't matter if the other team is regarded as the best team. We still take it to him. That is not Gareth, uh, Gareth Southgate's. It's, it's not his method of football. So I don't understand how people would turn around and say, yes, Gareth Southgate would be a good fit for United. He'd just be a yes man and he would still be learning how to play attacking football. He does not play that style. So for me, removing Eric Ten Hag for any manager is the wrong thing. We've got chaos, we've got carnage. There's a virus in there, still has to be rooted out, still has to be healed. So at the end of the day, he's got one year on his contract left. I don't see why Ineos would push to get him out because they're dealing with him. He understands what's going on. So there's, t there's time here to move and change things and, and adapt and also to put people in the working order. That's how I see it. Yeah, I'm just trying to like trying to put some dots together here as to why Ineos would want Gareth Southgate to be on that list and a top target if Eric Ten Hag was to lose his job at the end of the season. And, you know, the only thing I can think of is when Dan Ashworth uh, worked with Brailsford when Brailsford was a uh, consultant to help hire the England manager back in 2016, which was Sam Allardyce. But I don't know if they then worked together to bring Southgate in to replace Allardyce. I'm not too sure. If you know out there, let us know. But that's the only sort of connection I can kind of see, especially with Dan Ashworth looking like he's going to be here at Manchester United in the future. I don't see the sense in bringing Gareth... Uh, Southgate in. I just don't... Yeah, I'm this, just trying this, to find yeah, something, yeah, I, some I, sort I, of dots. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it, right? <laughs> I would look at it and think, well, OK, if Eric Ten Hag failed in his last year of his contract, then why wouldn't you want to bring in a manager who could bring a calming influence in the dressing room, who would talk to players? You know, he's got a good understanding with players, works well with players. I've heard lots of people talk about how he's respected and how he gets along with players, OK? I would understand that at the end of next season to bring in just to settle things down, to get things and the structure right and to move it forward in a slow way with a hand guiding it, under, getting players under control because by the time next summer comes we should have got rid of a lot of players who we regard as the virus and bringing in Gareth Southgate would look a good option but next year under them circumstances if Eric Ten Hag failed that's the only way I can see it, uh, Gareth Southgate coming into here and it, it making sense Everything else doesn't make sense. Would I like get Southgate to come as a manager? Certainly not. I, I go back, and a lot of yous out there will not remember Franco Farrell. He had no charisma. He had nothing. He brought nothing to the table. He would do the same, Southgate, in my opinion. No charisma wouldn't bring it. And when you look at what Sir Jim Ratcliffe's just come out with, we had the biggest club in the world. 
You know, everyone talks about sports. It's Manchester United. When you look at the commercial side, like Coca-Cola, he said, we're as big as, yeah, yeah. OK? Well, you need a big personality to come in, someone who can manage the media, someone who can get out there, have a personality to project what Manchester okay, United yeah, sorry, is all about. OK, I get that. So do you think... Gareth Southgate is a better option than Eric Ten Hag in the way he presents himself to the media in press conferences, etc. No, I don't. Listen, Ten Hag is doing fine. Yeah. He's doing fine with everything what's going on. He's had to overcome. No other manager would have been able to overcome and he's still got work to do. Do you know what I mean? And if Ineos talk about best in class, OK, they have to see and give this man time so they can change, he can change, but to bring in Gareth Southgate is not best in class. He's a complete and utter loser. We've seen that in his football management. We've seen that in his England. He is afraid to go for the juggler. We have seen it time and time again. He is classed as a failure. That's how I see it. So, what, what with Eric Ten Hag here now, he's got his contract runs out at the end of, is it 2025 in the summer? You know, should Ineos give him a contract before the end of the season or should they wait until the season's finished? Did he go into next season? Him still not signing an extension? What do you see going forward here? Because there's only going to be more and more rumours there circulating. Yeah, there's going to be more. Before the end more, of the season. Listen, there's going to be more and more rumours, but. At this moment in time, it's an international break. And what a great time for Eric Ten Hag, right, and the powers that be inside United to sit down and start talking and planning. And I do believe that's what's going on now. I have to go back to the comments from Eric Ten Hag about working with Ineos. They're doing fine. They're working on the summer contracts, uh, buying yeah, I get that, and selling. But you... No, no but, but, but they will work out now. Yeah. OK, right. And I cannot see them turning round and getting rid of Eric Ten Hag in the summer based on everything I've seen. And I think this story has been put out there to generate maybe clicks or anything like that, but put out at the right time. England are playing. It's an international break. Uh, the story there has killed the euphoria about Man United beating Liverpool. What a perfect time to put a story out and plus to kill ask the Gareth, atmosphere. They can ask Gareth Southgate himself, can't he, in the media as well, to try and keep that story going as well. That story will rumble and rumble, and I think that's why everybody out there is having a meltdown, because they can see that this story mm. for the next two weeks is not going to go away. Southgate will time and time again bat it off, but he has no time. But anything else, he should be committed, and I do believe he will be committed to doing everything and working every hour of the day on the England success in the European Championships. That's how I see it. He has to be committed and to talk and to even think about pushing United forward with transfers and everything else and working for Manchester United, the biggest club in the world, right? He can't do the two. There's no way. And he can't be committed if he has already got options on the table. So I think it's a story to generate an international story where Gareth Southgate will be hammered with questions. Still didn't ask him a question, no. Answer it. Well, go on. I, I said, do you think Ineos should give Eric Tanag a contract, well, an extended contract okay. before the end of the season, in the summer, or do they leave it going into next season if he's still there? I think that conversation will be going on. And I'll go back to it. It's a perfect time for talks like that. They've got plenty of time to discuss transfers, his contracts, players' contracts. And I think this time, right now, this week, is a good time. And I think they will be talking about it. And me personally, I think what will happen is just before the start of the season, uh, Eric Ten Hag will be there and then he will be offered a new contract once they've worked everything out and all the right people are in the right place. So the structure is there. It's a winning formula. Away they go. There's your new contract. And it'll be a contract drawn up where the whip, I believe, I don't think Ineos, Sir Jim Ratcliffe are going to come in here and start giving out contracts, and that's managers as well, where they can just walk away with a big payoff. So I think there'll be, a, uh, I think there'll be something in a contract where it says you've got a one year and we can extend it, just like they do with players' contracts for another year. I think that might be in the pipeline going forward. Do you think them sort of decisions as well will be left up to like Omar Barada and also Dan Ashworth when he does come in, hopefully fingers crossed in the future, more so than Jim Ratcliffe and Brailsford making them kind of decisions? Because to me, when I, I listen to him, it's like they want the 
best people in place managing the certain boxes to make them big decisions and th run the football club? I think what, what, what it is, I think they'll, they'll all make the de decision together along with Eric Ten Hag. I think once they're all sat round the table together inside Old Trafford, I think that's when it'll all be worked out. But at the moment, people aren't in place. And I think in the summertime, yeah. that's when they'll all sit round together and Eric Ten Hag himself might turn around. You just do not know in this situation, what the structure is going to be and what the plans are. Is Eric Ten Hag going to have influence on transfers? Let's see in the summer. He might find that out, that he's got nothing to do with it, and he might get players rejected. He might not want to work in that environment. That's something we all must look, look at going forward. He might not want that structure. So at the end of the day, once they're all sat down together, talking away in the summer, as soon as the season's finished and they're all in place, I think that's when we'll find out. And that's why I think once they're sat down, I think before the, end, uh, before the start of the season, a contract will be put in place where there's an extension, where there's an option, just like when they sign players for four-year contracts and then they give them a one-year extension. I think that will, will happen to Eric Ten Hag. Uh, and to me, I think that's a fair way to go about it. It'll be his third year in and he, he should have everything in place with his players, what is needed. That's how I see it. How much do you think he's done up to now, though, where it's an hour, truthfully, though, like handling all the pressure, especially with all the, you know, the sale nonsense, what was going on for God knows how many months, you know, players in the dressing room, you know, not turning up on the field, throwing the toys out the pram ever since he's walked in through the door. How do you think he's handled all that? And is that why you think he deserves a third year with, you know, a decent backing behind him now with Ineos? Yeah, he deserves that third year because the two years have been absolute carnage yeah. on and off the field. Injuries, players throwing tantrums, players walking off the pitch like Ronaldo with a salt when he, you know, when... It was he against just, Tottenham one. It was yeah, a substitute. He, he just Tottenham, walked yeah. off, and that just brought all its troubles. But Ronaldo knew that, and everything else. And then the Sancho, and then you've had other players and all that. So you've had your. He's Rashford. not really had then time just to concentrate on managing the football team. Then is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying, and a lot of people out there have said exactly the same. Mm. So with a bit of structure behind him, he should be able to get it underway. He deserves the time. We keep changing managers and all that. And if you listen to the noise and the, what's going on on social media and everywhere about it, this noise will absolutely tear Manchester United apart. I have not seen a meltdown like this for a long, long time, and it will not go away. So to have Eric Ten Hag <laughs> with a new contract, with a possible extension at the end of next season, triggered, then I think that will appease everybody uh, and to see how it works going forward with this structure in place. But the structure has to be in place. Just for instance, just a question here. If it was to happen where Ten Hag loses his job in the summer, Southgate comes in after the Euros, would you fully back him, support him? Would, would I fully back him and support him? <clears throat> like any other managers that you've seen over the years in your lifetime? I would turn around uh, and say, if Eric Ten Hag was removed, whoever came in, I would support him and say, good luck uh, and, you know, I back you. That's all you can do and hope that the structure, the, man, the new manager works and everything else. That's what you do with the football club. And when you see it's not going to work and when you see the problems and that, you highlight it. But at the end of the day, I look at it this way. <clears throat> if Ineos brought Gareth Southgate in, he'd have nothing to do with transfers, bringing players in or anything. So what are they saying? He won't be there till July. That is a fact, an absolute fact. So what they're saying, here's the players... Here's the structure. Now go out there and win. Well, if that's what they're saying, Gareth Southgate is not a winner. And at the end of the day, Ineos state that they're going to bring in best in class. And I don't see anybody, anybody out there saying that Gareth Southgate is best in class. But what are they bringing in? A yes man? Is that what they're really bringing in? Manchester United don't need a yes man right now because there's still some players in there, like a lot of people say out there, in terms of dead wood, who need shifting out the club. And I think Eric Ten Hag's done a good job of that up to now, identifying them players, showing us all who them players are. And I think there's still a lot more to continue there into the summer and maybe beyond. Yeah, well, the thing is... Because it was it, never going to be a quick fix when he walked through the door. Is Gareth Southgate the right man to walk in to conflict? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think he's got the personality. I mentioned his personality before. Biggest club in the world and all that. Does he suit 
does his personality suit the club? No, it doesn't. So at the end of the day, has he got the personality to deal with conflicts? He's in an isolated situation with players what come away from the clubs and they all gel together. And at the end of the day, you have to go back and look at Mason Greenwood, right? How he messed the camp up. He's not the only yeah, there one. Was some conflict there, weren't there? Well, there was him and the uh, the city player, what's it? Foden. Still Foden. So yeah. he had him and Foden. So is he the man when you look back? You know, conflicts and the structure with the and dealing with players. You know, mm. he allowed that to happen. The structure, what he had at the England setup, allowed that to happen. So at the end of the day, is he the proper man when you look at it? And the fact that he's won nothing, and that he fails, and that he takes it, takes takes it to the enemy, as they say on the football field. We don't see that. So is the is he the right fit? Me personally, I don't think he's the right fit. Not for Manchester United. Yeah. I'm sorry. Trying to look through the chat just to see if there's anyone in actual support of Gareth Southgate to ever become the Manchester United manager. And I've got to be honest, I can't find one comment at the moment. Ooh. But if there is, bang it out in capital letters so I can see it. But uh, a super chat from Zayn Miasi. Cheers, my mate. He says, how will you compete with Arsenal if you get Gareth Southgate? Well, put it this way. How do we compete with Arsenal? If Manchester United win the FA Cup... Right, you're competing against Manchester United because that's another season without any trophies. So wait till the end of the season, come back again. With Gareth Southgate, how would we compete? I don't know. Right, that's a big if. It's a big what. What will this do? What will that do? I don't know. All I know is what I see, and what I see of Gareth Southgate, he is a loser, and he is not a fit for Manchester United. And you saying that there's nobody in the chat. Right, saying <laughs> they want Gareth Southgate minute, anyway. or he's a good fit, right? Well, that will tell you what is going to come. If there's chaos and carnage, there's going to be outrage in the ground, out the ground, in the media. <clears throat> Any media turn round and say, he's a good fit for Manchester United. They are just winding you up. Yeah, Leon uh, Dyer in the chat says, no top club would take Southgate. Maybe Newcastle might take a punt on him. Do you not see any over the top clubs out there? Not just in England, in Europe. You know, if they were needing a manager to look at Gareth Southgate and think, yeah, he's the man to take us forward. OK, you look at Newcastle. They, they, they want winners. They want to win things and all that. Would they take a punt on Gareth Southgate? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Does not fit. Does not fit the criteria. The way Newcastle wants to uh, progress. Liverpool, they're going to be needing a new manager. Is he best in class, Gareth Southgate? Would he, would he go in there first before Alonso? Not a chance, yeah. OK? There is no chance, right, that Gareth Southgate would be picked by any top club. He has not proven it in football management and he has proved not to have the bottle in international football, which is completely different than being the manager of the biggest club in the world. The pressure every day is on you. And he, to me, I look at him when he speaks, the way he holds himself and conducts himself, I don't think he's got it. And by the looks of it, everyone out there is saying the same thing. Yeah, um, still can't find any positivity around Southgate. Um, if you're just joining us, let us know if uh, you're keen on Gareth Southgate, so to speak. Same Yassi again, cheers to your super chat, mate. He says, Arsenal will stop Liverpool by winning the league this season. No, no, the Arsenal will not stop Liverpool winning the league. Manchester United will in the next home game. That's what will happen. Liverpool will be frightened to death of coming to Manchester United and opening up because United could possibly just go out all attack because they, will, they might have nothing else left to fight for except respect and a bit of, bit of that, bit of art for the badge and just take Liverpool and go for it. So you just never know. United might do it for you. Yeah, Zach Me says he'd rather take Brucey over Southgate. I think Bruce had only come here if there was a few more Donner kebab shops around there, some cheesy chips, etc. Yeah, but Bruce, he understands what it is to be part of Manchester yeah. United. He understands, like, the media. He understands, like, the players, what you need to do for him and all that. And I don't think Gareth Southgate has it. Where has he got? Where is, where it's is charisma, it? charisma, like you say, isn't there? But then again, we're not on know, the just, inside just, as well. No, no, do you, do you we're know? Looking from the outside. The more and more I talk about Southgate and that, I actually want to bang my head against the wall. Do it. Uh, no, I won't do it. Do no. It. But if he does sign, I am going in the canal. Yeah. That is definite, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, 
There is a place for Gareth Southgate in football, but not at Manchester United. Yeah, fair do. Not what Ineos want. If Ineos really want to be, right, the major club around the world and they want to have everything, commercial-wise, you name it, the lot, and the best in class, Gareth Southgate is not that manager at this moment in time. Bit off topic here. I'm just going off of that super chat from Zane. But who do you think will win the Premier League first? United or Arsenal? I know Arsenal are there or thereabouts challenging this season. We're going to be in a strong, strong position compared to Man United. But do you think it's more likely Arsenal will win the league before Manchester United? Well, looking at, at, the, at, at what you see now football-wise, mm. Arsenal are, are well in front. Yeah. You know, they're, they're a well-developed uh, team. They know what they're doing. They've got the style and everything. And, they, and they've got the players. There's some good, really good players in there. So at the end of the day, they're way in front of Manchester United. Yeah. Um, still no positivity around... Gareth Southgate in the chat. One thing I did see today, and again, it's a bit off topic, and it was surrounding Garnacho, and maybe this is just the week for, you know, silly week stories around internationals, but yeah. they were linking him to Real Madrid. And I've seen reports stating that when uh, Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid, comes over in April when they play Manchester City, he does want to speak to the player. Is that something you can see in the future in moving to Madrid? No, no. Uh, you know, th these stories... Th I've I seen it six months ago about Garnacho. You're always going to get stories like this when you've got an exciting player at Manchester United. And let's get something straight. We're going on about Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Ineos and all that. Mm. They are not in the mood for selling quality players what just might take this club forward as we go on. And I'm telling you, not a chance Garnacho will be allowed to go anywhere under this new regime. But as you see, though, a lot of these South American lads, though, they look at Real Madrid like it's the pinnacle of the career, though. And you can understand that, totally understand that, but... Uh. Not, not, not in the near future. Not in the mm. near future. This is a young lad. He's still developing. He's got a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, and maybe in four or five years' time, yeah. yeah, he could look at it then, right? But the story now uh, is a load of garbage as far as I'm concerned. His head won't get turned. There's people around him. Uh, and I think Manchester United, with the structure, what's coming in, will keep his feet on the ground and explain to him, you're learning your craft, son. You've not made it yet. You're going nowhere and we're not selling you. Yeah, one of the best comments I've seen up to now is from Wesley says, we will block Warwick Road if uh, Southgate comes in. Yeah, we'll only block... <laughs> well, Wesley's saying that. He only lives around the corner from uh, Warwick Road. So that's why he's saying Warwick Road, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, we're going to block him with bodies or we're going to build a wall. Like yeah, what should yeah. we do? <laughs> yeah, we'll do... We'll build a wall. No, at the end of the day, listen, this has got everyone, everyone just going mad yeah. and it, it won't die the down... But the media, as far as I'm concerned, have played a blinder. Yeah. I've played an absolute blinder with this story. And I don't believe it. And when the bookies offer you three to one that Gareth, say, Gareth, Gareth Southgate will be the manager, then you know the score. A fool and his money will always be easily parted. Yeah, anything more to add before we wrap it up? No, no, no. T to be honest with you, like... Uh, I could rant and I don't want to rant because at the end of the day, I want to try and make sense of it. And it's just a story, what's come out there. And I, I honestly cannot believe that Sir Jim Ratcliffe, at his age, would ever think of bringing a manager like that with no charisma. Just having no charisma is a no-no for Manchester United on its own. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us in the chat today. It's been thank absolutely you. popping off. Still not seeing any positivity around Gareth Southgate, but if you are watching us right now, get it in the chat underneath the video. I'd just like to thank as well Stephanie for keeping an eye on the likes. Oh, great. How many people are watching. So much appreciated there, Steph, for doing that for us. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with another Manchester United news video. You enjoy the rest of your day, Reds, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.